1797, Lucas Sullivan came, platted the town, started inviting people to come up and, and live here. People are starting to live here. Well, people are going to start dying. You need a place for them to be. Franklinton Cemetery started in 1799. And you're going to find a lot of Revolutionary War people here because this was a part of the Virginia Military District. It was the only way that Virginia could pay some of their veterans, War of 1812 veterans in this cemetery as well, and a lot of the founders of Franklinton and Columbus. You'll recognize the names. We have the Goodells, you also have the Sanduskys. McDowell's, McDowell's. Uh, Deerduff. There's even a street named after the McDowell's. Mm -hmm. If you look around, the cemetery is not that big. So as the population increased, we had to find other places to go. And so one of the things they did was they started to move out from Franklinton and into Greenlawn. There's a movement in the mid 1800s to start to create cemeteries outside of cities. Uh, one of the reasons was for health reasons. We had a lot of cholera epidemics, typhoid, and you're burying people in the ground and that could possibly get into the groundwater. Also for development, Sullivan had a grist mill and a sawmill nearby. The river was right past us, and in the 1850s, a railroad was put into this space. And in the 1890s, another railroad was added to that, which pretty much was the death knell of Franklinton Cemetery. When uh, Green Lawn was created in 1872, the prominent families were starting to buy their own family plots and bringing their family to those resting places. There was one African-American buried here. His name was Arthur Boak. He actually was adopted by the Sullivan family. He was born about the same time as uh, Lucas Sullivan's son, Joseph. He was supposedly the son of an ex-slave, uh, and Sarah Sullivan decided to uh, bring him into the family, adopted him, raised him as one of their sons. He was buried here with the family, and then as the family was moved to Greenlawn, he so was moved with them as well. So that shows you just how much the family particularly cared for him and made him a part of their, their family. Columbus is actually founded in 1812, and in 1813, there's a public cemetery, and it was just called the public cemetery at that time, just north of where Naughton is today. It was outside of the city limits. It later becomes known as the North Cemetery. In the 1840s, there's a little bit of, uh, of development, and so there's concern about the size of the cemetery and its growth, but it still continues to grow. There were three or four additions to the cemetery. As the rail systems start to come in in the mid-1800s, it's pushing up against that area. What comes with rail? Industry, business, people. And there's a decision, again, as part of the movement to move cemeteries outside of populated areas to take down the North Cemetery and try to remove those bodies. They're going to be moved to Greenlawn. One of the news articles I read said that they had removed over 800 bodies in that initial process. But we're still finding today that there are a lot of people who are still residents of that cemetery, so to speak. Today, it's known as the North Market. I have no doubt if they start to dig and they start to build apartment complexes, they're gonna find bodies. So I would just say when you go to the North Market, just remember to walk lightly because you never know what you're walking across. <laughs>were Chinese in Columbus uh, kind of early on, you'll find that uh, some of the first burials were actually at Greenlawn Cemetery. And then at one point, a particular burial in 1956 for a gentleman named Chan Wu. He was a patriarch of the Chinese community at that time. He had passed away and because of the uh, Chinese New Year holiday coming up, uh, the burial had to be set for a Sunday. Greenlawn's regulations said they couldn't bury people on Sunday, so they had to look for an alternative. They came here to East Lawn uh, because they would allow burials. And as a result of that, the uh, Chinese community actually gathered together and said, we're making a decision to propose to buy a huge lot out here for future Chinese burials. So we're here at East Lawn with Thor Triplett, the owner of the cemetery, and he'll give us a little more history. East Lawn Cemetery was founded in 1923, and it originally comprised of 80 acres. During the Depression, East Lawn lost about half of its land in foreclosure. The mortgage was owned by Capital University or the Lutheran Seminary College. The area that we're in right now is the original Chinese section. It was dedicated by the Columbus Chinese Benevolent Organization in 1956. 
This is the Lee family. They had the Hotoy restaurant, which was down on State Street. It used to be on uh, Town Street at one time. Back behind us is the Yi family. They had the Ding Ho restaurant, which was one of the oldest Chinese restaurants in Columbus. There was a fellow that approached me back in 1998, and his name was Andy Chan. And he was a friend of Michael Sow, who owned the Kahiki restaurant. And at that time, the Kahiki was doing food preparation, frozen foods. Andy Chan and another fella decided that they wanted to provide a benefit to their employees who were making egg rolls frozen prepared egg rolls because there was diminishing room here in this section here and no room for expansion that they wanted to open up a new um, section in the cemetery north of where we're standing now so they bought about 75 grave spaces with an option to purchase additional. A lot of the headstones that you may see in the Chinese sections you'll notice that they're black or red. The red color represents an evil free condition and for the Chinese today, it represents um, happiness, good fortune, and protection. So Thora, seeing a lot of offerings at the tombstones as well, was this for a particular time, or is this just something that people are coming out to um, and doing periodically? There are folks that come out here on Fridays, typically. They'll light incense on all the headstones and the graves, and they'll put down offerings. I was looking at this. This was pretty elaborate. Would that indicate their standing in life? Not necessarily. The fellow that um, did this particular headstone, he um, is a developer in China, and these are his mother and father, and they owned um, a lot of restaurants for them to remember the opportunities that the parents gave their family. They wanted them to be honored in this manner. One of the things that reflects our culture and our society is how we take care of our dead and it's reflected in everything from the simplicity of Franklinton Cemetery to the beautiful tombstones that you see over in the Asian cemetery. So it's a great opportunity, even if you don't have ancestors here, to again look at a community that you are living amongst.